Hey guys, so iOS 17.1 is now officially out for everyone worldwide. And of course, in this video, I wanted to share with you guys a few settings and options you should definitely look into or change right after you update your iPhone to the latest in the next major update to iOS 17, iOS 17.1. So let's go ahead and dive right into this video. Now, Apple, of course, continues to add new features and functions to the iPhone with the next major update 17.1. And the first thing I want to look into is some of the things you should consider doing right after you update your iPhone. Now this update is approximately six to seven gigabytes of a download as you can see right there but it won't be taking away six to seven gigs from your storage just simply overwriting the entire operating system so you can go ahead and install it right now and what you want to do the first thing after you update is you want to head on over into settings you want to go into general and then you want to go into the about section because oftentimes there's carrier updates for better network compatibility and performance so if there is you'll see a pop-up on the center of your screen once you go into the about section there in settings now the second thing i always recommend you do is you want to head on over into the app store and even if you have the automatic app updates featured enabled on your iphone you want to go into your avatar on the top right section here you want to swipe down to refresh and then you want to make sure you update all your applications for better compatibility with the latest ios 17.1 now with that being said let's go ahead and jump into some of the settings you should definitely change or look into with ios 17.1 so the first thing i want to talk about is apple music there's actually three things to look forward to here so you want to go into the section right here where it says playlist and if you have any playlist right here you can actually customize the artwork for the album on that playlist by clicking here and then clicking on edit and apple has preloaded some images for you to choose from and you can see there you can customize the artwork for the actual playlist on your playlist here for apple music now there's also suggestions here when you start playing so if we go here and start playing some music we also have some new suggestions right below there to continue auto playing on that playlist that you've already created based on the music that you're listening to and of course if you go into the actual ui here for apple music so let's go back into the apple music ui you have a star right here where you can favorite your songs right there and then really quickly you also have this on the lock screen of your iphone if i can go into the lock screen right there it is so you can go ahead and press on that star and favorite a song directly within the ui there and the controls within apple music so three things to look forward to here with apple music in ios 17.1 now, the next thing I want to talk about is standby mode. And now, this is a new feature, of course, that Apple made available with iOS 17 that allows you to prop your iPhone to charge in landscape mode. It activates standby. Well, if you have an always-on display device, under standby options, there's new display options. So there's three things to choose from here, or three options to choose from. You have turn off display automatically, after 20 seconds or never so if you prop your iphone up on a dock right and you go into landscape mode and you have the standby mode feature on always on display it would always stay on well now you have the option to automatically after 20 seconds or never to turn off the display so you have three new options for display under the new standby mode feature on 17.1 which i think is something you should definitely look into i'm going to go with the 20 seconds i think is the best option for me but you can go ahead and choose all those three options available to you now now one interesting change that apple has made here with iOS 17.1 is add additional functions to dynamic islands. So if I enable the flash, for example, I can now long press here and turn off the flash directly from dynamic island. And what's interesting is that Apple also added this feature to older iPhones like the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. So if I enable the flash here, it shows up there on dynamic island. You can long press and then turn off the flash. And these functions work also for the new focus mode options as well. So if you set the action button for focus mode, you can enable able to disable focus mode directly from dynamic island also voice memos start or stop a recording and things like that so yeah there's some new options for dynamic island here in ios 17.1 as well now another thing i would like to mention is the new photo shuffle option available on the lock screen with apple added additional functions so if we go to set up a photo shuffle options right apple has now mentioned that this was a bug this feature was meant to be available within ios 17 but now it is fully functional on 17.1 where you can select an actual album from the selection here in photo shuffle and this works on iphone and ipad you can actually select the photos and also the album specific albums here for photo shuffle options if you use that option here on the lock screen just something that i wanted to mention because again apple mentions this was a bug apple was meant to release this album option initially but it didn't work on 17.0 17.1 does fix this issue and last but not least i want to talk about one of the biggest features now available on 17.1 which is the ability to continue to transfer files 
videos via airdrop using your phone's cell network. So you no longer have to be within airdrop range. You can continue sending large files via airdrop using this new option here. So you want to go into general. Of course, you want to go into airdrop. And this is an option right here you want to look into. So use the cell data. Now keep in mind, if you have data caps, you want to make sure that you keep this into consideration because this is going to continue sending files over your data plan okay so you don't need wi-fi you don't need to be within airdrop range but it will use your data so make sure that if you enable this feature you understand that your data will be consumed if you continue to send large files over the internet without wi-fi so yeah a new use cell data option available for airdrop the feature is finally here you no longer have to stand next to the person to continue to send a large airdrop file you can walk away and it will continue sending over the internet and that's everything i wanted to share with you guys basically i was 17 point one is officially here these are some of the things settings and options you may want to look into or change thank you for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one peace